character design can already be pretty intimidating, let alone trying to animate it. So today I'm going to walk through the basics of building a character for animation. Let's get into it. Hi there, my name is Audrey Steeman and I'm a freelance graphic designer, illustrator, and motion designer. And today I'm teaming up with School of Motion to give a quick overview of how to build a character for animation. So there's endless ways to design a character, right? But the core principles are pretty much the same. I'm gonna briefly get into the importance of character design, setting you and your character up for success, organizing your layers, and giving it a little bit of animation to bring it to life. And if you'd like to follow along and start designing your own characters, feel free to download the free working files from the link in the description. So, there's a lot of purposes for characters in motion design. Most of the time they're figures that are meant to kind of lead us on a journey through something. And this can be through a story, a lesson, a product walkthrough, the list can go on. And those characters should help us feel a certain way about whatever we're watching. And that's where thoughtful design comes in. It's pretty crazy that a character's shape, proportions, even color palette can help determine the tone of the animation. For example, if things are meant to be more serious in tone or carefree, relaxed, adventurous, etc. And more importantly, when it comes to a real life animation project budget for a client, those things matter a lot. Because when you think about it, the amount of characters that you have, the amount of detail, amount of movement, if they're speaking or not, all of those things and more can suddenly make a budget for an animation explode. <laughs> but having a defined system of what your characters are going to look like in this world that you're building is going to take out a lot of guesswork and ultimately going to help with scope creep and, and not accidentally go over. But no matter what budget or deadline you're trying to make or the level of complex animation you're trying to accomplish, design comes first. I'll preach it to the rooftops till the day that I die, but <laughs> design comes first. And a good rule of thumb is that your design should look great in static form, but even better in motion. So if it doesn't look good in a static form, just sitting on its own, you should probably revisit it before it goes into the animation phase. So let's get into the fun stuff. So to set you and your character up for success, you wanna start with a little preparation just like you would with any other project. You should pull any references that you might need and you might even want to consider making a little mini brief for your character if you need help setting up some parameters. And for you Notion users out there, I actually made a free template brief to help you kind of get started with making some of those details and parameters about your character. And you can find that in the description below too. And now to start sketching. If you're doing more of a humanoid figure, uh, the anatomy is pretty simple there. <laughs> you're gonna need a head, neck, torso, arms, hands, legs, and some feet. That's pretty much it. <laughs> you can either start by sketching them in a pose that you want to see them in, an animation, or you can start by doing a T pose or more of an idle stance to help with rigging if you plan on rigging it later. Now let's talk about proportions real quick. You wanna kind of consider the proportions of your character in the kind of world that they're living in. Again, if it's a more realistic kind of world, then maybe more realistic proportions. If it's more carefree and a little more silly, then you know, super long legs and a short torso, super small head, big hands, you know, very exaggerated kind of anatomy. So shape language, we wanna kind of consider the shape of our character and the limbs that they have. For example, having more angular shapes could make your character seem more intense or serious, while rounded shapes give your character the impression of being more relaxed and carefree. It could even be a mix of both. Also consider how your character's limbs, hands, and facial features are treated within your defined shape language too. All of these things are stuff to consider as you're making your own parameters of your character or if you're just doodling and just having some fun with it. Just go wild and just do whatever feels right. So getting into design and joints a little bit. One of the most fun things about designing a character is actually designing it from top to bottom. So that's what we're gonna do now. So to get started with this, you have your sketch, you have your color palette, whatever brushes that you choose to use with Procreate or Photoshop or your program of choice, or if you're doing Illustrator and more a vector approach, having your pen tool ready. And using my example for my character, we'll name him Miguel. I'm using the same brush on my iPad with Procreate to get this rough edged look and using a simple five to six swatch color palette. Now, this part is probably the most important when it comes to animation. If you take a look at how I'm separating each part of his body based on where his joints are, I'm rounding them 
so that when the two limbs meet together, it'll make a circle or a joint. And that'll help with kind of hiding seams or any like disjointed looks with, you know, moving your character around. So an easy way to think about this is that, you know, there's a racquetball wherever the joints would be, like a circle. So in his shoulders, wrists, elbows, even the base of his head, anywhere where Miguel would pivot or rotate a part of his body, a joint should be there. And depending on how detailed you want to get with hands and fingers, you can add, you know, a joint at each kind of little mini phalange here uh, to get more detailed with fingers. Or you can just have kind of a, a second knuckle and then the base of where the palm is here. And something else I want to note too that you can't see in my Procreate file here is that as you are creating and kind of rounding out those joints for each individual limb or half limb or whatever, you should be naming your layers. You name them always, <laughs> and it'll especially be easier when you get this into After Effects to start parenting and start animating a lot faster. So just keep that in mind when you have each of these body parts on their own layer. Each finger, each eyeball, each pupil, every little thing should kind of have its own layer and then just naming them. Just, just good practice. And once you've created your awesome character and design, you should see all of these layers named within your file. It might look a little intimidating, but it's about to get to the very, very fun part. And so now we need to get our file into After Effects. So there's a couple ways you can do this. We're just gonna do it manually just so everyone's able to do this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to After Effects, double click into the project panel, and then I'm gonna grab my Photoshop file and then under here where it says import as, you wanna do composition retain layer sizes and then create composition checked here and then import and then make sure it's editable layer styles, retain layer sizes, make sure that's still on and then okay. And when I click on my composition, you should see all of the nice little layers here and they're already labeled. And some of these are fine to have in groups as well. Like I have my neck with like the shadow detail in there, torso, stuff like that. That's like all one piece is okay to have in groups. But otherwise, it's kind of recommended to have in general everything on their own layer or, or you just add them in later. Or if you want to go a much quicker route, I would highly recommend looking into Battle Axes Overlord for Adobe Illustrator or Time Lord for Photoshop to kind of just immediately start sending those layers in from program to program without having to do the whole import drop-down menu stuff. So I hope this video helps with kind of navigating designing characters for motion. And if you want to dive deeper into character design or more animation related courses, you should check out the Illustration for Motion course and the Character Animation Bootcamp. These courses should help you get in the confident mindset for preparing, conceptualizing, illustrating, and animating your characters and scenes. And the links for those courses are in the description below too. So we've got our good friend Miguel here, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set all the anchor points to all the joints and just anywhere where there would be any like pivoting or rotation. And then we're going to parent all the layers and then we're going to do some like color coding. Uh, again, just for the sake of organization, when you animate, it'll be a lot easier. So let's get started. Some of these layers don't actually need a resetting of their anchor point, but it is good to check all of them just to make sure that they will rotate on the right point. Sometimes it'll, it'll look really wonky when you go to start animating and then they're just rotating the completely wrong direction or just in a really wonky way. So for here with the head, I'm going to put the anchor point toward the joint of like the neck base, if that makes sense. And then you can test out the rotation by using W here. Um, and obviously nothing's parented yet, so the face isn't going with him, but in terms of the head moving around, that looks fine to me. And it helps too to like solo out certain layers as well, just so you can see the center of that joint a lot easier. So here's a perfect example with the, the forearm and the upper arm. This being the forearm here, have the anchor point kind of in this like semicircle area. And then if I select the upper arm as well, this is going to go to the shoulder. But if I lower the opacity real quick on both of these, you'll be able to see right here, there's the joint. So that's kind of what we're aiming for here. And now we're gonna start parenting everything for Miguel here. So with his face, got the ear, hair, mouth, nose, 
eyes, brows, glasses, everything. So I'm gonna hold shift and select multiple of these layers here. I wanna make sure I grab all the right ones to attach to his face. So I'm gonna grab the whites of his eyes, the brows, the glasses. I'm gonna pick the pick parenting pick whip here, attach it to his head. The left pupil is going to go to the left white, right pupil, right white, and then the head will attach the neck, neck to torso, fingers and thumb to palm, palm to forearm, forearm to upper arm, upper arm to torso, and so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna go through all of these real quick. So as you're doing this, feel free to kind of test out the rotation and pivots of your joints just to kind of make sure they're doing the right thing. So this is the neck, mess with the head real quick. So everything's attached to the head, can make him nod super easily. And then with his arms, if I were to move his right arm, everything is attached to that. And then if I move the laptop, it's gonna stay where his hand is, just cause he's holding it. And now I'm just gonna kind of color code everything and then add some keyframes. Now with bringing Miguel here to life, uh, I generally start with doing just more general, larger body movement and then kind of work toward the details like animating his eyes, his smile, maybe, especially if you have a character with like longer hair, like making that wave a little bit too, just to give some tertiary or secondary animation. And it just really adds a lot to the life of that character. Yeah, I'm just starting with general stuff and then working toward the detail. And what's cool about doing short animations like this is that you can make them loop by using expressions. So if you kind of do some mental math and kind of get the keyframes just right, you can just have them on a seamless loop. And that's just super fun to make for little GIFs or just things for your website. And there you have it. We're done. <laughs> so yeah, this is just a simple character built from top to bottom, from sketching to designing to animating and, and all of that good stuff. But overall, I hope this helped with kind of navigating through building a character for animation. Again, it sounds a lot more intimidating than it is, but when you have just a couple things in preparation and just some design and illustration principles, you can do pretty much anything you want with this. Thanks again for checking out this video and definitely be sure to like this video, subscribe to the School of Motion YouTube channel as well as my personal channel, Audrey Steam and Design and Creative for more animation and design related tutorials and tips. Schoolofmotion.com, if you didn't know, is a wonderful place to look into courses that'll help you and prepare you for industry standard design, illustration and animation principles that you can use in literally any project. And definitely subscribe to the newsletter too. It's probably one of my favorite parts about School of Motion that I look forward to every single week. I definitely learn something new every time and it keeps me updated within the motion design industry and keeps me from feeling old and outdated in my workflows. So <laughs> definitely uh, appreciate um, School of Motion for that. Again, you don't have to be a professional character designer to design some characters and bring them to life. With a clear brief as a guideline, some basic design and illustration principles and a very organized file, you can't go wrong. Experiment with your tools, your programs, your animation methods, and there's no doubt that you're going to make something great. Also, be sure to drop in your favorite part about the creative process, your creative process in the comments. Thank you guys again for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!